Hi everyone, my name is Greg Germer and I'm here to bring you the Weekly Ronda. What is the Weekly Ronda? Well, it's going to be my little new show every Wednesday about the world of cycling. I'm going to bring you different tidbits on news, results, controversy, rumors, all those different things that everybody wants to know about but are scattered all over the internet. We're going to bring them right here every Wednesday for everyone to enjoy. And with that, let's start the Weekly Ronda. The first thing I want to talk about this week is Adam Hansen. This guy, 35 years old, rides for Lotto Bellasol, has just done his 16th Grand Tour. 16 Grand Tours, didn't stop in any one of them, didn't slow down, just boom, did them. Amazing. He is, by and large, one of the most interesting riders out there. He's done so many different things that are actually off the bike that you probably didn't know about. I'll link a couple of them down below. Next on the agenda we had Tom Zerbel. Tom Zerbel rides for Rally Cycling and what did he do this week? He just set the second fastest time for an hour record of any rider out there. He beat Jens Voigt's time, Matthias Brandl, Alex Dowsett. Only guy he hasn't been able to beat with the record, uh, Bradley Wiggins. But on the other hand he did set a new US record with 53.037 kilometers which is amazing in its own right. And this is from a domestic D3 pro. In fact, a pro at the end of his career. So for that, Tom, great ride, very awesome. And to follow up Tom, I'm going to do another awesome thing that happened. It wasn't quite this last week, but it was just a little bit past. And I'm going to butcher this name, so we'll just find out how this goes. Marcin Bielo Blocky was able to set a new 10 mile record in the UK. Uh, on top of that, he just said, yeah, 10 miles, I'm gonna go and set a new 25 mile record. He didn't just beat the re old record, he smashed it. What can I say? It's been a very good week for all the different time travelists out there. In other news this week, cyclingweekly.uk has put out a article about Italian teams charging riders to race for them. But on the other hand, it's kind of been an open secret within pro cycling for a long time that the lower level teams do that. The part that actually caught my eye and the reason I'm talking about it is <laughs> you're not just talking about charging riders to race for them, but they sign them to long enough contracts that they have to pay the team to leave, which in its own right is crazy that you have to pay to be on a professional team, but then second, you have to pay to leave a professional team. It's definitely controversial. It's definitely something that happens, but it's something that needs to be addressed. So with that, the world keeps spinning and people keep paying to be on professional cycling teams. Okay, this week in results. We had the European Championships as the major road race event of the weekend. And surprise, surprise, Peter Sagan took the win. And on the women's side, you had Anna van der Breggen taking the win. Both these riders have been on the form. Both of them are basically showing their cards very early for the World Championships. In cyclocross this week we had Nittany Cross out in Pennsylvania and out Wisconsin at the track headquarters well the track cyclocross out in Pennsylvania for Nittany Cross you had Jeremy Duran winning the men's race with Christelle Ferrer winning the women's race day two Jeremy Duran did the repeat was able to win again and we had Arlie Kramer winning on day two for the women now out in the track cyclocross World Cup you had a little bit of a different scenario a uh, bunch of the people that are coming over for the World Cups, plus uh, basically the entire Telenet Padilla team decided, hey, we're going to show up because we're sponsored by Trek now. <laughs> but it was a pretty cool event because the first day you had Steve Chanel take the win. That's pretty cool in its own right, considering he's basically a retired rider. Uh, on the other hand, you have the part that actually makes it really cool is that Steve Chanel was going up. Uh, not against one, two, or three, but four Telenet Fidia riders in the final sprint and was able to take on four of them to take the win. Uh, and then you had Katie Compton on the first day, the C2, take the win. Day two of the Trek Cyclocross Cup was the C1, and on that day you had Wout Van Aert. It was the Wout show all day for the men. Wout just stole the show. On the other hand, you had a lot of other Telenet Fidia riders giving a good battle. You had Stephen Hyde from the US also up there doing quite well. Day two of the Trek Cyclocross Cup was pretty much more defined 
by and the women's side at least was defined more by the mechanical than most anything else early on you had katie compton in the lead you also had carolyn manny up there both of which had mechanicals on the day although caitlin Anthony went on for the win in a very strong showing it backs up her performance from last year and i'm actually quite looking forward to how she's going to be able to perform this year and i think she is going to be one of the top women to watch this year um, so i'm looking forward to her performance the day of this video because i'm in belgium this will be me waking up at four in the morning to watch a late night cyclocross race in the u.s which is kind of the reverse of what everyone in the u.s kind of has to do sometimes to watch cyclocross here so hey live and learn it's called internationalism of cyclocross on to a few more of the uh well more controversial rumorish parts of the week and things i found interesting you had the sky tue uh leaks well it was actually wada being hacked by russian hackers called fancy bear ended up hacking into wada's uh TUE and whereabouts system during the Olympics and has since released information about a number of athletes out there and what drugs they are taking for their therapeutic use exemptions. Sky on one hand has Chris Froome and Bradley Wiggins kind of surrounded in some controversy about this. There is a good link to on cycling tips to an article on there. I won't get too far into it because it's not it's too intricate of a topic for a quick little news bite show. A not super fun article, but one I find kind of interesting and more so because I live here in Belgium, but it's also the world I kind of surround myself in in cyclocross is that of Elle Anderson on VeloNews. A nice long in-depth article on her time here two years ago, how it affected her, her mental state and everything. And I've said this before to a lot of the people that stay here at the house that I run, is that the racing part's actually just a small part of what you're doing here. It's the, the mental aspect. Belgian managers have different expectations. They approach things differently. The way that they handle the riders is what many Americans would consider very harsh. If you know these things going up front, it's a lot easier, but if you hadn't been introduced to it or the idea or concept, it can make it rather hard. Great little article, do read. So coming up this week, we have Interbike happening, well, starting the day of this video being dropped. I'm gonna try to find a couple good articles, different tech and different things that are coming out. Won't be a whole lot of very new, new stuff because, well, all the really new cool stuff dropped a couple weeks ago at Europike, but that's just how it works. Uh, but I didn't start the show until now, so what I'm actually most excited about is cyclocross is here. Two major cyclocross races starting off the World Cup season very early. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out over the next couple of years. If we sustain with this North American start to the schedule, what is kind of considered quite early, the Belgian cyclocross calendar doesn't really kick off until the start of October, whereas the U.S. calendar starts very early in September. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the World Cup schedule plays out over the next couple of years. If we start getting two World Cups in the States is the normal thing. You have a race on Wednesday, you have a race on Saturday separated by more than a thousand miles. That is a long, long way for most logistics. For some people controversial, for others they are happy to condense the travel time and the travel expense into a shorter period but it is great to see the world cup expanding beyond just the kind of eurocentric belgian nucleus we do have world cups outside of belgium but when hogerheid is literally peeing distance to belgium and Kauberg is uh, not quite peeing distance but i would say you can see belgium from Kauberg. so that's kind of a bit of a difference but overall, very excited for cyclocross season to start, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens each week. All right, that's it for the weekly Ronda. I'm Greg Germer, and I will see you next week.